Today I'd love to talk about Hong Kong comics. Now, I should have been aware of Hong Kong comics before, considering that I am a massive fan of Hong Kong movies and the kind of energy that exists in the swordplay films, the martial arts films, the gunplay films. So of course it would extend to Manhua, which is the name for Hong Kong comics in general, but for some reason I never really went looking. It wasn't until I was reading about The Black Mask recently, the Chui Hark directed Jet Li starring film, that I realized it was based on a comic book. So I went looking for that comic book, and it led me to this book. And the reason it led me to this book is because Hong Kong comics aren't really that available in English, except for one exception, and I'll get to that in a moment. But the book was usually the main thing that came up, and it's a beautiful book. Unfortunately, with a very uh, crummy binding that's already ripped the second that I got it. Uh, it seemed to be fairly available when it was released a number of years ago. My library had it. I, had, I was able to pick this up at my local comic book shop. And it's kind of a history of the uh, medium with tons of examples. And unfortunately, no full prints of anything. Mostly just covers of comics as they've been through the years. And a lot of political stuff, just a real density of material that's only depressing in the sense that I know that I will probably never be able to comprehend most of this stuff, if it's available at all. Now, the one exception I was talking about when it came to Hong Kong comics, or manhua, is the comics that were published by Jade Man in the late 80s, early 90s. So Jade Man is essentially the Marvel and DC of Hong Kong. They had a massive market share of Hong Kong comics for the longest time. And Jade Man in English was something that happened in the late 80s. This first issue of The Bloody Sword was published in 1988. Jade Man is mostly known for its very eccentric publisher, Tony Wong, who also illustrates some of the books. And this particular one is one of their most famous. It is written and drawn by Ma Wing Shing. It has scripts by Mike Barron. So when J-Man came to North America, they would have scripts by a bunch of famous English comic book writers. For example, Mike Barron. You also had Len Wein, who did a bunch of Swamp Things and tons of other famous work. And I think they mostly just put their names on it and did very little else because the text in most of these does seem auto-translated. So let us jump in here. Uh, the thing about Jade Man, and one of the reasons they could publish in North America and in tons of other countries like Malaysia, is that they own their own printing presses. So the comics were printed in Hong Kong and then they were shipped to North America. So they had their particular style. Now, this comic, I am not an expert in the history of Menwa by any stretch of the imagination. It's just something I've only come to in this year. But I've read that the Blood Sword is one that was extremely popular and kind of revolutionized the way that these comics could roll out. Uh, what you have here is a perfect example of the Hong Kong style, or particularly the Jade Man style, incredibly dense panels. So these were reprints of comics that had existed before they were published in 1988 in North America. So these comics also had a lot of pages. These were often weekly comics or bi-weekly comics so they just churn them out so like you would pick up an issue of blood sword and it would have 62 pages there were so many of these jade man books that were published in the late 80s and i'm not sure if the reason that they stopped being published was because the market kind of collapsed or it was because the owner of the company tony wong was arrested for fraud and went to jail I wasn't sure if he had gone to jail by the time this one was published because he's all over these first few issues and there were a whole bunch. They essentially like flooded the market with Jade Man books, just republishing old and popular stuff. And it's like manga, but not. It definitely has that Hong Kong feel. You have all the swordsmen, you have special powers. I love how the use of speed lines in this, especially this artist loves to use them. And I used to draw speed lines all the time when I was a kid. I had no idea how to use them. And you look at this, and this is not how they're used in North American books. Just like you have kind of these speed lines that you would see in manga, but look at this bend to them. And in the density of the page, it feels completely different than you would expect from the Japanese counterpart. Now, the issue with reading these kind of comics is they are at once rare and incredibly common. You will find these, like the Blood Sword, as well as 
Oriental Heroes, which is an another one that was published side by side with Blood Sword, and The Force of the Buddha's Palm in dime bins. So you will find them in those long boxes you usually find in comic book stores, right at the front or at the back. And so it'll probably be very difficult to find complete runs of them. And if you look online, because no one really cares, they're incredibly expensive if you want to buy a bunch of them. I was hoping they'd be like, oh, you could get like, you know, the first 10 issues for five bucks, but nope, you can just get random issues and they're super expensive. But then if you go to some comic book shops, like for example, I got all of these in New York and these were like a dollar. That's, there's no value to them, like if you look at combo price guides, but there's no reason for people to come bring them in stock. So hopefully the way that you'll get these is just go to your comic book store, ask if they have Jade Man comics. Maybe they have like them all collected in the back, but otherwise look in the dime bins, the dollar bins, that's probably where you'll find them. And what's unfortunate is that because there were so many that were published, it's tough to get complete runs. Like I got a stack of the Blood Swords and I was really excited because I saw it with the first 25 issues. No, it was the first 10 issues, and then issue 14, and then issue 20 to 25, and that's because they're tough to get these days. What's really great about these comics is that they were designed to be published on this kind of like newspaper print. That's what the colors were engineered to work in their best way. And even though some people may find it kind of looks off, like the kind of the purple here and how it's, you know, leaning off of this blue, that there could be some registration errors on some of the stuff. I love it. It gives me a feel of a particular type of comic that you just don't get anymore. I remember hearing a creator say that that it's actually more expensive now to print on newspaper if you go to a publisher than it is to print on glossy paper because that's the norm now and glossy paper especially when this kind of stuff is reprinted I mean you see it all the time in Marvel comics it's way too saturated it was never meant to look that way and it completely changes the intent that the artist had for these books now I know that Tony Wong is still kicking around. He's still doing comics. Maybe that's the reason they haven't been republished. I would love for a company like Fantagraphics or Drawn and Quarterly to pick up maybe a run of these, maybe even Image Comics and just do like a gigantic color paperback in an omnibus. But I mean, it hasn't happened yet. And as we'll see, there seemingly is just no interest for these comics. People don't really care about them or know that they exist. I mean, even me, a fan of comic books and Hong Kong cinema, I didn't know this existed until, you know, like six months ago. And that's bananas. It's just people don't really talk about them. Mostly because they came and went in a couple of years. Uh, the market was glutted and then they just whoop, disappeared. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that what got me interested in these kind of comics was the mention that Black Mask, the movie, was based on a comic. And so I went looking for Black Mask, the comic, because of course it should still be in print, right? wrong. Now, I don't know if the reason for this is the previously mentioned no one cares about Manwa, or Choi Hark owns the rights to Black Mask indefinitely. Or maybe the artist just doesn't want to publish it. I'm not quite sure. So I went to France. I speak French. And I did find the author of Black Mask, Li Chi Tak, one of his most famous books, Spirit, was republished in French. And this book is like the 2001 of Wuxia Comics. Uh, it is just fantastic. A little bit confusing even being able to read the text, but what I've read is that this was a seminal work and basically made him as a comic book artist. And this is the kind of stuff it really deserves to be published in English. And I can't believe it hasn't been yet. Like it's, it's frustrating because this is good stuff, but I've even heard people that work for companies like Viz, that there is no interest in older manga. That people want the new stuff, uh, they want the stuff that has real big cult audiences, but like the older stuff, it's tough to get published. I don't know if it's a cost thing, maybe the materials aren't available to do reprints, I don't know, but I find it incredibly frustrating that I, all I have is this French reprint and a book, it's called The Beast, but unfortunately it's not in English, and this was a Li Chi Tak drawn thing, but it's actually a French original who collaborated with Li Chi Tak on this book. And I don't even know if it was published in Chinese. I'm sure it probably was, but its first version was in French, which is this book that I'm holding right here in my hand. Look at this stuff. This is beautiful work and never published in English. So if there's anyone out there who, I don't know if you'd be a comic book publisher and watching this, please, we want more memoir in English. Specifically, Lichi Tak. Start with like Black Mass, start with Spirit, get it out there. I feel like there's a whole new audience 
that artists like this could get. And if you want to be extra frustrated, I would definitely recommend reading Asia Comics by John A. Lent. It looks kind of generic. When I picked it up off the shelf, I was like, uh, Asian comics, oh, okay, it's going to be like manga or stuff like that. Nope. This book is actually about all the other countries output so you got china you got hong kong you got korea you got taiwan you got cambodia indonesia malaysia india nepal like we never hear about these comics i will say that this book while it does have an introduction to some amazing stuff it is a little bit academic almost a little bit too detailed in the way that it goes about it but you're going to read about stuff in english here that you have not heard about anywhere else and the most frustrating part about it is None of this stuff is available in English. You just can't get it. I can't even find most of this stuff, like, searching through Amazon or Google in its original language. And I want to read so many of these books. I would love to check out some of the Indonesia superhero comics that they have in here, which was recently adapted in a movie that was released as Gundala, uh, directed by Joko Anwar, a mostly horror director. And, yeah, like, get these books into print, into English. Don't we live in a print-on-demand society now? Isn't it easier than ever to get this in the world? I mean, I know right now there's a paper shortage, but I would love to see some of these books back in print in English. I would definitely be the first one in line to buy them. So I hope I got some interesting stuff here that you've never heard about and that you will check out. And if you are a fan of me, I would highly recommend checking out The Important Cinema Club, where me and my co-host Will Sloan go through all sorts of different topics, ones that people have never heard about, but are available with English subtitles most of the time. And we like to introduce the people to new stuff, just like I hopefully introduced you here to some new artists that you will either frustratingly hunt down or just scream to the heavens, why isn't it in English? I'll see you in the next video.